Hey, to, today we're going to continue our conversation about um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 20. Great passage. I'm so excited to, to spend, um, you know, close to probably six, seven, eight weeks in this text because you and I are chosen for battle. And the, the, the deal is this. When God saves us, he didn't save us for the playground. He saved us for the battleground. And there is a battle going on for your faith, for mine, for the people around us, for our children and grandchildren. And the way you and I navigate this war, uh, this battlefield, will determine the victories that we experience from day to day. And so I, I want to just talk a little bit about kind of cutting through the fog that we get ourselves into. You might notice that over my shoulder, there's a fog setting in around my, my, my home. And that fog will come in and, and it will obscure our ability to see. A lot of us have the same thing going on spiritually. We've got a fog that is set in and obscures our ability to see clearly what's going on around us. Uh, this week in the message, I, I tried to emphasize very, very clearly and powerfully that it's a daily battle. It's not a battle you fight on Sundays. It's not a battle that you um, can overcome with a podcast. Uh, it's a battle that will require your engagement. Um, Dallas Willard says the spiritual life is a life of interaction with God that, and it's pure delusion to suppose that it can be carried on sloppily. The will to do His will can only be carried into reality as we take measures to be ready and able to meet and draw upon Him as our resource. I love that. You and I have got to know that the spiritual life cannot be carried on sloppily. Uh, we, we can't just kind of uh, willy-nilly, hit and miss, and think that we're going to be able to live a, a life that is, is, is exciting spiritually, is feeling like we're truly conquerors spiritually. For those things to be actualized, you and I have got to be in the game. We've got to be fully, fully present. This comes right out of verse 10. He says, finally, he's talked to the Ephesians about so many incredible, amazing things about their standing in Christ, about how to live out, how to put on, put off the, the right things. And he kind of is concluding and wrapping up. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And that little that little word strong is the word en dunamaho in the Greek. En means you've got to get, you got to move into this available power. In other words, power is available, but I got to move into it. It's the idea of putting power into something. You and I have been given a relationship with Jesus that literally in the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul says it's going to be a relationship. When you access Jesus, you access power in dunamao. When you access Jesus, you access power. You might remember the beautiful little prayer in chapter 3, verse 16. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he, God, may strengthen you with, and dunawaho, strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have in dunamaho power with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of God that he wants us. God wants us to be injected with power. We have three things about that that you've got to realize. Number one, there's a war, there's a battle. Number two, there's a power that's available. Number three, access the power. There's a war, there's power available for our day-to-day -day victory. Three, I've got to access the power. I've got, to, I've got to get into it. It's a little bit like the idea of, of an engine. We've got gas engines and electric engines. Uh, the gas engine, right, if you don't put fuel in, it doesn't make any difference. There's power there, but it's not going to be deployed without the gasoline. In an electric engine, there is power, but if the batteries are dead, you're, you're not going anywhere. You're, you're dead in the water. <laughs> Some of us have a spiritual battery that's dead. Some of us have a spiritual gas tank that's on empty. <laughs> So what I, my point was for this last week at service was saying your daily time with Jesus is how you fill your tank. It's how you fill your tank. Your daily time with Jesus is how you charge your battery. 
how you charge your battery. <laughs> so I just, I just covenant for you. I, I call you, invite you to hunker down, <laughs> to be disciplined, to not carry on sloppily your relationship with God. But like it was the most important meeting of the day, you would prioritize your connection with him. For you will never regret that priority. I want to encourage you and invite you. Join a small group. Resolve. Double down on your daily time with him. My group of guys that I do life with, we had like 30, close to 30 guys in our group today. Um, I encourage them to be memorizing uh, Romans chapter 12. Um, and that's going to take some time, but I'm just going to stick with them and, and keep encouraging them. For some of them, they'll have that in a, in a couple weeks. For some, others, it'll take a month or two months. But that is an incredible piece of my arsenal. Romans 12. I love this passage. You've heard me recite Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Your meditation on Scripture has the power to transform your mind, your emotions, and your will. Lord Jesus, we once again, Lord, we invite you to, to be drawing us to yourself, to be filling us with power as we engage this resource that is available to us, the resource of your spirit, of your presence, of your word. We love you, Lord, and today we honor you with our choice to spend time with you. Help us to do it as vigorously and enthusiastically tomorrow as we do today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow.